bishop photography and I thought I'd just make some tutorial videos because people have been asking me and I'm going to start with putting an image together from several different frames and it's going to be a really simple one um, and then I'll do some separate um, videos on actually editing that image um, but I'm going to break it up into different videos because if I do one image from start to finish it will be really long um, and nobody wants to sit for an hour watching me edit all at once. So this is the image I'm going to use. Um, it's not ideal lighting, it was really bright sun, um, but we did what we could on the day. And um, I wanted to get sort of fairly close up on her face, so I shot it so that she pretty much filled the frame with her figure there. Um, but I was going to work to a square frame or maybe in a bit more so I wanted a bit more information on this side and this side of her so I just took a shot to her left as well and a shot to her right and um, the only thing I've done in camera raw with any of these images is um, ticked the lens profile correction and remove chromatic aberrations. So just ticked that. And it's really important to do the profile correction um, before you stitch images together because you see you have the dark vignette around the edges um, if you take the profile correction off. And then if you try and stitch it together, um, you know, you're going to get uneven lighting because these dark bits are going to influence um, the lighting in your image. So basically it's really easy sometimes Photoshop works wonders for you and you just highlight them all right click edit in and then merge to panorama in Photoshop so I'm going to click that and it might take a little bit of time for it to do it it should automatically open up Photoshop for you if you don't have it open already which I do um, I've actually put it together once just to check that Photoshop will do it but I'll do it again uh, I just clicked auto but sometimes perspective or cylindrical or spherical works better and you might just have to try a few different things. Um, I've already removed the vignette in Lightroom so I don't bother ticking any of these other ones. I've tried the content aware fill transparent areas and in my experience it doesn't really do a nice job. Um, so this is the finished image. Photoshop will put another one together so it's just going to grab them all in and take a bit of time to do that. And you might be wondering why I didn't just stand back and take a whole shot with more of the foliage on either side of her visible. Um, and there's a couple of reasons. The first, I'll go back to Lightroom because this, this isn't very interesting. Um, so the first is that, you know, the more you're filling your subject with your frame, the more pixels are being used to, to create the information in your subject. You know, so you get more detail in the person's face if you zoom in compared to if you stood further back and took a picture. You know, you're not having as many pixels make up the person's face in that case. And the other one is that I tend to shoot at a fairly shallow depth of field. This one was at 1.6. I used my 85 millimeter Nikkor. Um, on my Nikon D750 and um, the closer you are to a subject um, the shallower the depth of field is going to be. So if I get closer to her and shoot at 1.6 you're going to get more fall off in the background here in this image than if I if I'd stood further away and shot at 1.6 a little bit more of that would be in focus so it gives you more of a sense uh, of a shallower depth of field when you work that way, especially if you're using like a short telephoto or something like an 85 millimeter or or above. So I find it works really well. Let's just see. I think Photoshop's finished now. So yeah, this is this is it. The second one done. Um, I've just got my crop tool selected. So what I'll probably do is just crop in there a little bit down to there me up to there and I'm going to put her a little bit off center in the sort of left third of the image more or less 
Yeah, maybe down a little bit. Okay, yeah, that looks that looks good to me. That's fine. Um, I've got a few little transparent areas, and that's absolutely fine. I'll fill those in, no problem. So, Photoshop did a great job of that. That was that was really easy. Um, one thing I always like to do though is just see where it's done. It's stitching. So that's where that image came from. And then just really go in and have a look and make sure that I'm, I'm happy with how it's blended it. Because sometimes, you know, you do get some artifacts or it doesn't really blend very well and you might need to do a bit of cloning um, or change the masks yourself. See, Photoshop has masked this out already. This is the, the mask that Photoshop has done. So the rest of the, the image is still actually there. I'm clicking Alt and clicking on my mask to see it. And if I shift to click, and click on the mask, it gets rid of it. If I turn the other layers off, you can still see that all the information from the image is still there if you wanted to use it. But if I turn the mask back on, and then turn that side on, turn it on and off a few times, and that looks fine to me. I did this handheld, I wasn't using a tripod, so there's always a little bit of room for error with um, the shots the when you're using a shallow depth of field of everything not you know being the right sharpness or, or amount of blur if I had moved backwards or forwards a bit when I was taking the additional shots but I try and do it pretty quickly and that's fine okay so after that what I would do is <clears throat> get a new layer on top I need to fix this little area up here and you can try that a few different ways. You can try content aware fill. I think in this case, I'm, I'm probably just gonna try and clone it and see how that looks. Um, I do have to get it in focus. Let's just grab a little bit down there and see what happens. Oh, well, that could be better. Let's get a bigger area. Let's go 100%. That's fine. I'm going to mask a bit of that off. With my brush. Painting on a, a layer mask in black. So I'll press X to change my color over there. Fill up a little bit. Okay, it's not perfect. Um, I would spend a bit more time doing it if not for this tutorial, but for me, that's for this, it's fine. Uh, and there's just a tiny little bit down there, which, especially because everything's blurred out, that should be no problem at all to just clone in there. Anywhere else? No, looks pretty good. Maybe, yeah, no, I think we're okay. So when I'm looking at an image, I'm just checking that it's been stitched together properly, um, fixing up any uh, transparent areas that um, where I didn't quite take enough shots to fill all the space that I wanted to fill. Um, and that's that really. So there you go. End of part one.